Welcome, everyone. My name is Bert Jensen. I'm a senior service engineer in the OneDrive and SharePoint customer engineering organization. And in my day-to-day uh, -day job, uh, my main role is actually helping ISVs and customers get the most out of their SharePoint uh, developer experience. And with me today, I have uh, James, who is also from customer engineering, but I'll let James introduce himself. James, take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is James Eccles. I'm a customer experience PM on the customer engineering team with uh, with Bert. My focus is all around SharePoint syntax, helping customers um, adopt syntax, understand best practices and how we can use that to improve the product. Thank you, James. So let's move to our uh, tool, the Microsoft 365 assessment tool, which is a brand new tool that we uh, released last week during the AIM conference. Um, and this tool uh, is an open source tool that you can use to run an assessment on your tenant for particular uh, adoption scenario or deprecation scenario. So uh, adoption uh, is, for example, the, the case that we have today, SharePoint syntax. I'm using, I want to use syntax or I'm already using syntax and I don't know where uh, syntax will add value to my tenant because there's so much content. There's like hundreds of thousands of site collections, millions of files. Where does it bring, where does it make sense to use syntax? So the assessment will help there and James will dive into the details on what it actually means, the syntax output, the report, and so on. And I will more focus on the technical parts of the tool because this Microsoft 365 assessment tool is not just for syntax. It's a platform, a framework that will use for all uh, forward going uh, adoption or deprecation scenarios. As such, it will also uh, replace the modernization scanner. So for the folks that have used the modernization scanner, that tool was kind of a little bit uh, a homegrown small tool that uh, has been getting more and more features without having the proper rewrite and a proper kind of backing. And with this tool, we, we hope to have, uh, we actually have changed that uh, to the better. To get started, uh, you can download the tool from the ak.ms slash Microsoft 365 assessment tool link. Um, and then the demo will show you a bit more on how to do that and, and what it means to run the tool. Uh, also want to point out that uh, compared to the modernization scanner, there is a ton of improvements in this particular tool. So for the folks that have used the modernization scanner, uh, it worked great, but as soon as your tenant goes really, really large, like if you would want to scan like 200,000 site collections, it was kind of sometimes hard to do. Um, and with this tool, the, you will see there's much more reliability and control for you as a person operating the tool. The tool itself is also open source, um, meaning uh, you can just look what, what we built uh, and you can actually build your own module. So if you have a need in your enterprise to uh, have some kind of a framework that can iterate across content and, and kind of check certain things, this can be like a nice baseline for you to, to start writing your own uh, uh, solution. Some Technical details about the tool itself. Um, when we run the demo, you'll see that the tool is an exe, Microsoft 365 assessment.exe, which is our command line interface. And the same exe is also used as the actual uh, tool. So the, the bulk of the logic, the core assessment operations all happen in the uh, in web server, ASP.NET Core Kestrel web server. And the command line interface talks to the web server using gRPC uh, as a protocol. So today we have a just a command line interface. In the future, we most likely will have another UI layer uh, to, to make it a bit more easier, uh, although the command line interface is already really great. Um, for the technical folks, all of this, this is based on .NET 6. Um, it's like a single exe uh, or a single package for Windows or Mac OS, uh, for Mac OS and Linux next to the Windows one. And all of that is .NET 6. Um, when developing this, it kind of really blew me away how, how easy this is with .NET 6. You just build one solution, you test on Windows, and you can just recompile it for Mac OS and, and Linux. And with very, very few kind of changes, you have like a single package that works. The package itself contains all the dependencies. You just distribute one file to a Linux host, and it, it just works. It's great. A uh, bit more about the tool itself. In the command line, command line interface, sorry, uh, you have a number of key actions that you can do. You can, uh, and we'll see them in a demo, but you can list the uh, running uh, available uh, assessments, start a new one, get a status, pause, restart uh, assessments. 
generate a report and so on. Um, all of these assessments, all of these kind of actions, sorry, leads to a, a call to the server, um, which uses a SQLite database as backing. So compared to the previous monetization scanner, which kept things in memory or just put them directly in a CSV file on disk, this one uses a SQLite database, which enabled a ton of improvements and, and reliability uh, enhancements. A certain point, your assessment is done and you want to generate a report and then we'll actually export data from the SQLite database into CSV uh, and into Power BI. Um, so that you, then you have both the data in CSV and the Power BI report. All right, let's do a quick demo. Um, so I'm going to shift to my other desktop. Here I am. And let's see, we have a folder. Uh, I've already downloaded the assessment tool. Um, you see it over here, Microsoft 365 dash assessment. And let's just uh, start that one. You can either um, start it like this, just hit enter, which I'll do in a demo, or you can do something like put the arguments next to the EXZ and then just run it like that. So this demo, I'm going to just run the tool like this. And you get like a version check, the tool starts. So let's first check if there are already uh, assessments done on this uh, uh, location. So if I type list, it will check is there an assessment server running? Uh, and if not, it will start the assessment server. So it will start the web server. And then it will talk to the web server over gRPC and ask like, hey, give me all the assessments that you are aware of. In this case, um, it is returning four assessments which I ran in the past. So uh, you see all of them are finished. Um, now, in our case, we want to start a new assessment. So starting an assessment is done using a command line, which I'm going to copy and paste. And before I run it, I want to explain a bit more. Um, so you see the start. So we start a new assessment. The mode is syntax. Um, this is the current mode. In the future, you will see more modes, more operations, either adoption or uh, deprecation being added. Authentication mode, you can do application permissions. Uh, you can also do interactive uh, and uh, device permissions. So device uh, authentication. Interactive and device are more meant for like, I have access to a particular site collection or to, I want to just assess my own site collections. Then those were great. If you want to assess your full tenant, you would use application permissions. You can scope the assessment to a single, to your full tenant. So, which is the case here, I'm scanning my complete tenancy. But you can also uh, scope an assessment via specifying a set of uh, site collection URLs, either on command line or via a pile. Then we have the application ID. This is an Azure AD application that uh, uh, you created. Um, We've, in documentation, you can find the exact permissions required for each uh, mode. Uh, so syntax requires certain permissions, uh, future ones might require different ones. And then finally, uh, the location to the certificate that we'll use for the app-only authentication. It's recommended to create your own application. Uh, if you don't specify an application, we'll default to the PNP uh, management shell application. So the one that uses a PNP PowerShell. If you're using that one, that might be an easy way to also then run an assessment. And finally, there's a syntax full uh, argument, uh, which uh, in case of the syntax assessment, uh, enables it to use search to get additional data. Um, if I hit enter, um, it starts to uh, check authentication, and then it will uh, enumerate the site collections to assess. So we have 383 site collections and it starts running. Now at this point, I can close the window and kind of leave it running but and come back later uh, because it runs in background on the web server. But I can just type, for example, now let's do a list and you see that, okay, we are running 18 site collections then, 5%. This is like a static view. I can also do like a dynamic uh, real-time um, status view, which is status. Now you see this one just moving along. So you see the counter, growing and the number of site collections being processed rising. A key thing that we added here is retries. So uh, with the old uh, monetization scanner, folks sometimes did it new. Is it stuck? Is it still running? Is it being throttled? Yes, no. It was really hard to tell. Here you'll get two numbers. The first number here 
will tell you like, hey, I'm throttled. I have a fork to nine, I'm throttled. The other one is a network exception. If there's a socket exception, something flaky on network happens, you will notify it as well and it will retry. So it's really robust. Uh, but if you see like a large number of retries, you know that you might are pushing too hard that you might want to run it with less uh, parallel operations, for example. Right, um, moving on. So one thing that a common request from the previous assessment of an immunization scanner was like, hey, it takes too long. Can I restart it? Can I stop it? Uh, and now you can. You just type pause minus ID, you paste the assessment ID, and now the assessment will be paused. And once it's paused, you can just shut down the processes, uh, close your machine, uh, do whatever you want. It's, it's there, it's an awaiting status. So this is all done. If I do now list, you see it's being paused, and now I can just restart it again. And it will start running. So and this also will survive like a crash or like a machine reboot. Uh, if it's just shut down, you can just pick it up and restart, which is really handy if you have like a huge, large uh, set of side collections to scan. Final thing to show, and then I'll move to James, is the report generation. So I can do a report minus minus ID. Then I need to pick one which is already finished. So let's take this one. All right, and hit enter. And then it's creating a report and it will open up the report in Power BI. So that's new for this assessment compared to the previous one. The previous one had Excel based reports. Now we chose for Power BI because that gives way more uh, options to, to visualize data. Uh, it's more flexible. You can easily adjust it for your needs. And also, as an admin, when you run an assessment, you get the report and you can just share it using your Power BI service in your organization. So you can share it with different teams in the organization that need to, uh, for example, work on deprecation or that need this adoption data. Now here is the assessment report uh, for syntax. And, and um, I think I'm gonna stop from here. And James, uh, I think you want to take it over and talk a bit more about uh, what this all means. Okay, thanks, Bert. And before I jump into the uh, the report itself, I just want to do a quick uh, overview of what we're talking about when we're talking about SharePoint syntax, because um, some of you may not have had the opportunity to uh, to play around with this before. So syntax is really about using AI technology um, to get the most out of the content we have within SharePoint. And in order to do that, we're really using AI uh, to take the knowledge our subject matter experts have um, and use that to drive insights. Now, there's a broad and expanding feature set within Syntex, and within the next couple of minutes, I'm not going to be able to talk about all of it, but the, um, the most important thing with regards to the assessment tool is the content intelligence section on this slide. So within this pillar of Syntex, we have various AI model technologies which can analyze content, analyze files that are stored in SharePoint, and then uh, generate metadata from those. So po automatically populating our columns uh, within SharePoint. Now, why is that interesting? Now, metadata on its own isn't particularly useful. Um, even for those of us who've worked with SharePoint for a long time, um, we might love metadata, but it's got to have a purpose. Here's just a few examples of how metadata can drive experiences across uh, SharePoint Online and the broader M365 uh, ecosystem. Now that could be across search around discovery of content in compliance scenarios, uh, such as with Microsoft Purview, uh, building uh, retention rules, um, driving e-discovery cases and so on, process automation in Power Automate, or even in things like uh, Viva Topics. So using uh, metadata and the taxonomy service to seed the topic center and the knowledge base. So really uh, what the Syntex assessment is driving at is giving you places where um, Syntex can help with the metadata story. How can we make that more reliable, more robust and more scalable um, in your organization? So this is an example um, based on my um, uh, demo environment, just showing you the type of reports that we have within the assessment tool. Uh, this home page gives you a brief overview of the different report pages. Um, and I'll show you a couple of examples to um, give you a sense of the type of data we're collecting and the recommendations that we're going to make.
So starting here on um, identifying the libraries with custom columns. Within the syntax assessment, we're looking across all of the libraries on the sites that you put in scope. Um, as Bert said, that could be a constrained list of sites or it could be all of the sites within your tenant. Um, and we're pulling back particular attributes of those libraries. While it's not possible for us to say exactly where the business processes might exist that syntax could, uh, uh, could benefit from, um, what we can do is find out indicators of libraries that we um, we know from our experience with customers could benefit from syntax. So, for example, libraries that have a large amount of columns, um, so libraries that are very wide. Um, from experience that I'm sure we've all had, the more columns that exist for a document library, the less likely end users are to be diligent in populating those manually. So the recommendations on um, this particular part of the report are about identifying those libraries which are the widest within your environment, and then considering whether uh, one or more syntax models might be appropriate to automatically populate that metadata for you. You can see on the right hand side um, visualizations to show which libraries are using custom metadata versus not, um, how many um, libraries of different widths we have, and on the left hand side the detailed information around specific libraries that we can then go and investigate with the content owner to understand their business process and whether or not syntax might be of use. Another example we find to be beneficial um, in syntax rollouts is the size and structure of document libraries. So we bucket uh, different libraries into small, medium and large containers as part of the assessment. Large libraries being any library with more than a thousand documents in them. And the, uh, um, the recommendation here is for those libraries which are particularly large, they can be really overwhelming for a user to navigate and browse through. Um, or even if they're using search, um, if we don't give them the means to provide a very structured ability to filter, sort and discover content, it's going to be very hard for them to find the information they need. So by identifying the largest libraries we have here, um, these might be good opportunities to deploy syntax models to, um, applying content types, generating metadata, really driving some of those discovery behaviours. Additionally, we show how many folders there are in the library. So while a library uh, could be large, um, and have no folders in it. It'd be very difficult to navigate for a user. Um, some might have um, more structure and follow that more um, uh, more traditional directory tree um, behavior. Now those might be a less um, less suitable candidate for syntax. So really, this is all about identifying where those top candidates are um, to begin the conversation with uh, content owners within the business to work out where syntax may be a good fit. That I will hand back to Vesa. Excellent. Thank you, James and Bert, on that one. Really, really, really cool stuff and, and awesome to see this automation in place. And, and Paul was already saying in the chat that I'm totally going to check out the source code of that uh, assessment tooling, which is open source, so which is really, really cool.